Joyce Erb from paperfinesse.com, guest designer for Cut at Home. Today we're going to be looking at how to make a galaxy background using Brusho powdered pigment inks. This is my swatches on the right for my brushos. I actually have 10 more that I need to put on here. I need to redo it. I'm going to be using this lemon yellow and I'm going to be using the red and I'm going to be using a dark blue. I'm using Tim Holtz Distress Paper, and I'm not bothering to tape this one down. I'm wetting just the center with water. I'm getting it pretty damp. I'm using my Silver Velvet Brush, 13, size 13, I believe. I like the shape of it. And this is my brush oil. This is the lemon. And I'm shaking out a good little bit. I actually tap it on the paper to help get it out. Next, I'm getting my brush clean and I'm putting a little bit, putting another ring around this of water. I'm using a smaller brush again. This time it's, this, it's still a silver velvet, but a smaller brush. And this time I am tapping on some red. I believe it's scarlet red. I let it dry. And I'm going to come back in now and just add some more water in some of the white spaces. I've been drying between the steps just to try and keep some definition in the colors. Of course, it's all trial and error. But with a galaxy, you can't really mess it up. What I'm doing here is I'm tapping some out on my block for some intensity. So I can add just a little bit of water and get a deeper color, less diluted. And now I'm putting some blue just around the edges. I've got two different shades of blue that I'm using. They're both pretty deep, but there's still two shades. I'm going to take my Distress Sprayer, and that's the second blue. And I'm going to take the Distress Sprayer and try to get mostly just the edges. If I was going for something other than a galaxy, I really like the looks of it just the way it is right now. So I'll let it dry again. And now I'm going to go back in and deepen some more of the colors and fill in some of that white space. I'm going to speed up the video now that you've seen the basic process, which is wet, sprinkle, spray, and let it dry or blow dry it with a heat gun in between the stages and then just come back and intensify the color where you need it. Here I'm just dabbing off the excess. Especially that center, I'm really trying to keep that center yellow, bright. But I also want it blend it. I probably could have left it at this point and let it dry and add some stars and be done. But I'm still trying to darken it up. It's dry again. And I'm coming in with some of the concentrated red. And I'm trying to get the red to blend with the yellow a little bit so the lines aren't real distinct. And then adding some more blue directly to the outside. Here I'm just using the wet paintbrush to help pull some of the color randomly into the background for different levels of texture and interest. I don't want a bunch of flat color. Let's set this aside and let it dry. Actually, I kind of like it right here. I wish I would have just left it here.
guess it wasn't quite ready to let it dry yet. I'm spritzing it again. It's at this point that I just covered up my yellow accidentally, but I do come back and fix that. I am liking the color. Like I said, the other before this stuff I think would have been fine as well. It's all a personal preference experiment. It's just paper. If you don't like it, try again. It really didn't take me long to do this at all. Since the paper is pretty wet, I do come back right now with the brush out and add some yellow in the center to try and get some brightness back. And it's really not bright enough, so I let it dry. Then come in some more with the brush outs, which you'll see in the next clip after it dries. And here I'm still adding some more. Okay, here it is after it's dry. And it's looking a lot better now that I added the extra there. I'm going to add some of the Pebeo iridescent gold paint. And it's going to be watered out pretty thin so I get just a thin layer of shimmer. And what I'm doing here is just wetting some of the red area I don't want to put any more red in here. I'll show you at the end one that I did prior to this, and it was one that I actually almost threw out. I had made mud, but I ended up salvaging it, which I will show you. But see how thin that is? It's very little actual pigment in it, but it's enough to leave it, leave a nice shimmer, and it just brightens up the piece. Now I'm just, all this is plain water. I'm not adding any more color right here. I'm just wetting some areas to put in some more shimmer just randomly. It looks a little odd when it's wet, but it dries nice. All it does when it's dry is just give it some shimmer in different areas. And I'm just trying to make the marks a little more organic. I don't want just blobs. So I just do that randomly around the card. So you can see there's just like a drop of watered out paint that I'm putting in there. I let that dry a little bit. Now I'm coming back to work on that center a little bit. And I'm just adding some water. That's my brush o powder what's left of it on my little palette there. I'm also adding a little water to the edges to bring the shimmer in. I'm trying to soften that hard line a little bit. I decided to grab my yellow from my Gansai Tambi watercolor, seeing it was sitting right there, and I can get a good concentration of paint, and I'm just getting some heavy paint and just dropping it in that area. This is my little box that I've got set up to do the sprinkling of the stars. This is my Copic white paint that I'm, it's a little dry, but it's okay for this application, so I'm saving it. And I add a bunch of water, thin it out. And this time, instead of the splatter brush, I am trying this regular flat paint brush. And it's not working all that good, but I'm getting some good big splotches. And then I will come back in with a toothbrush for the small splatters. I end up making quite a mess this time. I get a little less on me when I use the Tim Holtz splatter brush. When I use the toothbrush, as you'll see here shortly, it's all over me, but it washes off easily. This 
this is the one I considered throwing out. See all the gold I added? That's because all of that is was mud. I don't know if you can tell under it that it was pretty dark. And I'm still not that nuts about it, but I figure I'll add the stars and see what happens. So I'm adding all the paint splatters to this one. See my fingers? I've got a sponge paint on me as I do the card, if not more. But it washed off easy. And this is what I ended up doing. I did save it. And you could put a sentiment over it. But what I really liked are those trees. This is a Gina Marie dye of trees that I put over it and a couple slow wet deer. This is the almost finished piece. What I did is I mounted this to cardboard and then I mounted it to a piece of black cardstock. And it's going to be given as a gift for home decor. So the cutout is temporarily in here. I'm going to add a couple cutouts, a couple of sentiments and let her arrange it to how she'd like it to look. The instructions with the color of brushes that I used will be at the Cut at Home blog. Be sure to subscribe to Cut at Home and also to Paper Finesse YouTube. Have a great day.